Hello everybody. I have got another paint along video for you today. Um, today is December 23rd, 2021. I think it's the 23rd. Um, so I know a lot of people have kids home from school on Christmas break and I wanted to do a fun little paint along that is something you could do with the kids. I know quite a few of you do these with your kids anyway, but I wanted to, to do something specifically designed for them. And I actually got this idea from some pictures that some kids in one of our schools did. Um, so give me just a second, I'll show you that picture. Okay, so that picture was actually done by a first grader, I believe. And I thought they, the whole class did them and I thought they were so cute when I hung them for display. Um, we're gonna base today's off of that basic design, only we're gonna embellish it um, add some doodles to it, um, you know, really kind of go the whimsical route that I like to go. So what we're going to need for this today is some watercolor paper. I've got a flat brush and a round brush. Um, the flat brush I'm mainly going to use for the background just to get it wet. So I'll show you that when we get there. This one's about an inch wide, but really, you know, anything in this vicinity will work. We're just going to use it to cover a large area with water. It's a little bit easier than trying to cover a large area with water with a smaller brush. And then this is, I think, a number eight round brush. It's the one I usually use. So we've got a couple of brushes, pencil, eraser, waterproof pens, as usual. The two that I've been really loving lately, um, I can't, I don't think you can read the label on this one just because it's so small. This is a Uniball deluxe micro and I'll put the names of these in the description. I like this because it's got a nice um, small tip so you could get fairly fine lines. It is a ballpoint pen and the other one that I'm really loving is the Uniball Eye Fine. It is also a ballpoint pen. It's just got a little thicker um, point so it's a little thicker line than the other one. Both of those are, um, I wouldn't say fully waterproof, but definitely water resistant. So most of the drawing we're going to do is going to be after we've done the water coloring, but because these pens are water resistant, if I decided at any point I wanted to go back and add color after I've put the pen on, these are not going to run um, as long as I'm not, you know, really scrubbing with my brush over them. So water resistant pens. I've got my Scotch wall safe tape. I've got my watercolors. This is my Daniel Smith set, but you can use whatever set you have because you're gonna choose what colors you want to use. And then I've also off camera got a couple, two or three little cups of water. Um, as I've mentioned before, I like to have multiple cups of water so I can keep one just clean whenever I need to put just plain water anywhere on my, my painting and I don't want to have any tint to it. And I also use that as kind of a final rinse for my brushes. And then I've got two others that I can use when I'm rinsing color out of my brushes. Um, I usually do one for blues, greens, purples, and another one for reds, yellows, oranges. So I kind of keep my, um, my cool colors and my warm colors together. That way I don't have to change my water quite as often <laughs> because if I've been um, you know rinsing off yellow off my brush and then I want to go use a red having a little bit of the yellow in the water really isn't going to affect the red all that much so that's why I have so many um, little jugs of water so to get us started we need some watercolor paper um, I am using an Arches 300 pound watercolor block you do not have to have this. Any watercolor paper you have will work just fine. Um, watercolor paper is typically 140 pounds or heavier. The heavier the poundage, the less warping you're gonna have. I like the 300 pound because it doesn't hardly warp at all. I also like the blocks because they're glued all the way around the edges. So all of the sheets in this in this pad of paper are glued together except for this one little spot. So it takes the place of having to tape something down. And then when I'm done, you can just stick your finger in there and separate that paper and pull it off. So I'm gonna use a watercolor block just because that's what I prefer. If you have just loose watercolor paper, you might wanna get yourself a board or something to tape it down on so that it doesn't warp quite as much when we paint. Um, I like to use these, uh, canvas boards are used for acrylic painting. They're nice and thin, but I flip them over on the back side and then I tape my watercolor paper to the back side so that that holds it down, okay? 
So if you don't have a watercolor block and you just have loose paper, I would grab a board, um, glass cutting boards, even just a regular wood board of some sort. Anything that's, that's sturdy and not gonna bend will work to tape it to. Because I'm using a watercolor block, I don't need to tape it to anything, but I do wanna have a little bit of a border around this, so I'm gonna go ahead and tape it anyway. I love the Scotch Wall Safe tape because it doesn't tend to rip the paper when you're pulling it off. So what I'm gonna do is take this tape and I'm, I'm just eyeballing about halfway, like to the middle line of the tape. And I'm just gonna tape all the way around my piece of paper. And I'm only doing this because it's gonna create a little bit of a white border. So it gives it just a little bit more of a finished look when you're done. Kind of almost looks like it's been matted in white a little bit. And I always tear these too short, so I have to kind of do a little visual measure. You can see I'm too short over here. I'm going to have to patch that little spot. So I'm just taping all the way around my edges. You don't have to do this part if you don't want to. I just like the look of a little bit of a border around it when I'm done with my painting. It just makes it look a little more finished to me, but you certainly don't have to do this. So if you don't have any tape, um, doesn't also have to be this clear tape. Washi tape works, masking tape works, painter's tape works, anything like that will work just fine. I would say though, if you're gonna use something like masking tape or painter's tape, those can, um, um I can't even talk today, sorry guys. Um, those can almost be too sticky and can sometimes rip the paper when you're tearing them off. So if you're going to use something that's stickier like that, um, tear your tape off and before you put it on your paper, um, stick it like to the leg of your pants or the arm of your shirt or something and pull it off. And that puts just a little bit of fuzz on the tape so that when you stick it down, it's still going to stick to your paper just fine, but it's not going to stick quite as, as heavily. So when you tear it off, um, your chances of ripping your paper are less. Okay. So I've taped around mine just so I have a little bit of a border. If the tape sticking out bothers you, you can just stick it down to the edges. It'll pull off just fine when we're done. We are gonna do this one with our paper upright. So this is portrait direction. And we're gonna start by drawing our little polar bear. I think we're all on camera. Oh, goodness sakes, okay. So, pencil, I'm gonna show you an easy way to draw this little polar bear. And I really liked the way that the kids did these. So we're gonna, we're gonna try and kind of keep a little bit of the, um, the kid look in this. So it's not gonna be really finished and really polished. So the first thing I wanna do is just kind of draw a little bit of a wiggly line across my paper. That's gonna be my ground line. Hopefully we can see this. I'm going to have to do this darker, aren't I? There we go. So there's my ground line. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is draw an upside down U, starting at my ground line, coming up, and ending back at my ground line. And I'm gonna draw this upside down U as big as I want my polar bear to be. Now, in that example drawing, the, the bear's body was pretty big, so I'm gonna make this go quite a ways up. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna draw this fairly darkly, um, just so that it, it will pick up on camera. Doing this on yours, lightly sketching it is best because we are gonna watercolor over this, and so um, that's just less pencil you have to erase. So I'm going to start about right here, and I'm just going to draw a great big upside down U on my paper. So that's my polar bear's body. Turn my light up a little bit, maybe you can see better. So there's my polar bear's body. Next I want to give it a couple of feet. So down here at the ground level, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to draw a couple of upside down U's like this, one on each side. They don't have to be perfectly U-shaped. They can be a little bit wonky. Um, if you look at mine, my U is a little taller on this side than it is this side. That's perfectly fine. That fits in with the whole whimsical um, kid-like look that we're going for for this. 
I'm going to put two straight lines in each of my feet just so that we get the separation that looks like the toes in the paws. So there's my feet. Now for my face, I want to have quite a bit of body up here at the top to play around with and decorate and have fun with. So I want my face to be right down in this area. So the first thing I'm going to do right about here is draw a circle for the, the muzzle area of the face. And then off of that circle, I'm going to do kind of a wonky rectangular-ish shape for my head. So I'm just going to start at that circle and kind of come off and just make it wonky, off kilter, perfectly fine. If yours is a little rounder, that's okay. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be this shape exactly, but you get the idea, right? I'm going to draw another circle right here at the top. and then a J and a backwards J. And then I will come back and erase the line in the middle of that top circle. So what I've got is the little muzzle area of the bear and my nose. Now off of this muzzle area and the nose, I want eyes. So I'm gonna do my upside down U's again. There's my eyes. And then in the middle, I'm just going to put a, a circle. We'll color those in black and put some little white dots in them to, to make those eyes really come to life. So there's my eyes. On the top of my rectangle up here, I need to have some ears. So again, upside down U's, and I'm going to do two of them. Where you put these is completely up to you. It doesn't make any difference where those go. So just put two upside down U's, one bigger, one smaller, same on this side so that you have ears. And at this point, we now have a little polar bear, right? So this little polar bear, I'm going to start adding some embellishments to him or her or whatever you want your polar bear to be. Um, just little, little fun things and little things that speak of winter to me. So I have really liked the idea of patches on things. Think old stuffed animals that are worn out and you put a patch on it to cover a hole or a patch on the knee of your jeans. I, I've really been enjoying playing with that idea of patches on things in my artwork. So I'm going to put a patch on my polar bear. So let me zoom you in so we can see this a little better. I'm going to put my patch over here. You can put yours if you choose to put one wherever you want to put it. And I want this patch to look like it's, it's kind of here and going over the edge a little bit. So it gives me a little bit of a 3D look to it. So I'm going to start on the edge of my polar bear. And I'm going to make a little U shape. But I'm going to bring it all the way down into my bear. And you can make it as big or as small as you choose. And I'm going to bring it down. And then back over. I'm going to go past the border of my bear and then I'm going to bring it up to meet the outside edge of that U and then come back and erase that inside line. So there we get the idea, zoom back out a little bit, you get the idea of a patch. It looks like it's something that's, that's kind of patched over. When we get to the part of adding the embellishments with the pen, we're going to put like little stitches on it and make it look like it's really stuck there. But before we do that, I want to add some more embellishment to this patch because I want to make it kind of a fancy patch. I want to have um, like a star and some other little shapes coming off of it. So I'm going to draw a star just like we were all taught in grade school where you start with an up line and a down line and then you bring one across and across and down, but I don't want those middle lines, so then I'll go back and erase those middle lines. There we go. And then I'm gonna make just some little teardrop shapes around my star. You could use circles, 
That one didn't come out looking much like a teardrop, so I'm going to redo that one. You could do circles, you could do triangles, you could do just plain lines. You don't have to do anything around it if you don't want to. But I thought that just added a little bit, a little bit of decoration to my patch. Okay. Down here at the bottom, I'm going to add some trees in front of my bear. Only I'm not going to make them like realistic trees. I'm going to make them really simplistic just because I think that's a cute look. So I'm going to just do triangles. Do one triangle there. One triangle next to it. And this one I'm going to make overlap a little bit. And then we'll just have straight lines down for the trunks of our trees. Let's see those real quick. So they're just triangles with straight lines down. Make it nice and easy for our trees. And I want to put a snowflake up at the top of my bear. So let's zoom back in here. Now up here at the top of my bear, I'm going to put a snowflake. So to do this, I'm going to draw a straight line and then come back across it. I don't want it to go all the way to the top because I want a little bit of room to put something on the end of each of these lines. And then I'm going to do diagonal the same way. And I think, what am I going to do? I think I want them all to be about the same length. So just eyeball that your lines are fairly close to the same length. If you have one that's a little longer than others, that's perfectly fine. But what I'm going for is I want the same amount of space um, from the center to the point in this vicinity for most of these if I can. So to make my snowflake here, I'm going to start about right here. And I'm just going to come up and make a loop and end back at about the same spot on the next straight line. And I'm going to do that same thing all the way around. And I'm just eyeballing these loops, trying to make them about the same size, beginning and ending at about the same point on the straight lines if I can. If they're a little bit off, one's a little bit bigger than the others, perfectly fine. Again, that's part of the whimsical look is that things aren't exactly symmetrical, they're not exactly even, they're not all the same size. So I've got some little swirlies there for my snowflake. I want to put some hearts on the end of my snowflakes. You can put whatever you want on yours. This is just intended to give you an idea. If you wanted to put a different shape on the end of yours, certainly do that. Let your imagination do what it would like to do. Um, I'm going to put a darker circle in the middle. I think I'm going to put more circles about the same size as the one in the middle on each of the lines. And I'm going to come back over these with my, with my black pen when I'm done. I'm just kind of laying the foundation of what I want to do here. And then I think I'm going to put a smaller circle above it. Again, right on the line. And then I'm going to put just a little V. And I might put a couple little straight lines on every other line in the middle. And the reason I did every other is because this is, this is such a tight space in the middle. If I did it on all of them, it would look too, too scrunched and close together. So I think that's kind of, that's kind of the basis of my bear for right now. So let's get the watercolors out. I'm going to leave my bear drawn really darkly so you guys can see as I'm painting what I'm doing. On yours, however, we've talked about in other videos that once you paint over pencil with watercolor, you can't erase the pencil out from underneath. So if you want to lighten your lines to take um, 
so that you don't have the chance of them showing up through your watercolor if you get a little bit off your line. Come back with your eraser and just erase lightly over the top so that you've just barely got some guidelines left to see what you're doing. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna leave mine darker so that we can see while I'm painting. Now, I'm going to add color to the background behind my bear. My bear itself is gonna stay white because polar bears are white, right? So my color is gonna go back here and then I'm gonna add little spots of color in some of these decorations on the bear. So this is where my flat brush is gonna come in useful because I'm gonna use the flat brush to put water all over this background. I want the background wet before I start because that's gonna let the paint just kind of disperse and mingle together. I'm gonna to use more than one color. Now from my paint set, I'm gonna use um, I'm going to use a couple different blues and some purple so that I get some variation in my background. Um, I love these little pipettes. If you don't have any of these little plastic pipettes and you paint quite a bit, you can get these um, from a lot of different places online. They're just little plastic pipettes and I love these because I can fill it up with water and then I can come put just a couple of drops of water in the paint colors that I'm going to use so that those paint colors start getting soft while I'm putting the water on my background. And that just makes them easier to re-wet and use when I'm ready. So I just dropped a couple of drops of water in each of those. If you don't have a pipette, you can get your brush wet. Get it really, really wet. Um, you know, Dip it in your water, get it really, really, really wet, and just let it drip into the paint pan. That will do the exact same thing, okay? So, I'm going to use my big flat brush. If you don't have a big flat brush, you can do it with whatever brush you have. It might just take you a little bit longer and you might have to go back over some spots a couple of times because, for instance, if you start here and you've got a smaller brush, by the time you get over to here, this might start drying. But the nature of watercolor paper is that it does hold onto the water and, and stay wetter than most paper for a longer period of time. So. Even if you have a smaller brush, you know, start at one place, work your way around. You might have to come back and add a little more on this side, but that's perfectly okay. So with my big flat brush, I'm just essentially going to paint plain water onto the background. I'm going around my bear, and then I'm just going to paint this plain water onto my paper. I don't want it sopping wet. I just want the paper to have kind of a shiny sheen to it. And as soon as I get all this on here, I'll tip the paper so you can see what I mean by that shiny sheen. What this is going to do is create a gliding surface. So when I start putting paint on, the paint is going to kind of glide and move around and the colors will mix and mingle because I want this background to have kind of a mottled look to it. I don't want it to be just all one plain color or have um, definite lines separating my colors. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it on the camera, hopefully not. Um, my brush had a little bit of lint in it for some reason, so I've got little spots of lint all on my background. <laughs> which should not matter. By the time I get the paint on, you shouldn't see them. Um, if you do, if that happens to you, usually once the paint's dry, you can go back with your hand and just kind of brush it off and take that lint off. Okay, so I've got my background painted. And hopefully, you can see there's kind of just a shiny sheen to that background. The, where there's no water on the bear, it looks nice and flat. Where there's water on the background, you've got a little bit of a shine to it. So I just want that little shiny sheen. I don't want it to be dripping wet because I don't want quite that much water. That, that ends up being too much. And then I'm just going to come in with my different color blues. And I'm going to go straight from my palette on this one. And just run your brush through the blue a little bit. Um, I am probably going to come and kind of dab this one off because this blue I'm starting with is a fairly strong blue and I don't want it to be too dark to start with. Whoops, I'm off the screen, sorry. And I'm just going to start running this blue around my polar bear. 
And I'm going to get some more and put some over here. And I think what my idea is for this, now certainly you can do your background however you want to. If you don't want to do blues and purples, you could do your background rainbow colors. You could do it however you want to do it. Um, I think for just what I'm feeling today, I'm going to start with this lighter and I'm going to work up darker as I go. So I'm going to come in. Oh, holy cow. That was dark, wasn't it? Okay, so how do you fix that? <laughs> that was a whole lot darker than I thought it was going to be. So because my paper's wet, you can see it's spreading. I rinse my brush off and then come back with just a clean wet brush and just start dragging that around. And that will tend to thin some of that out. Um, try to do it as quick as you can because sometimes darker blues can be staining, which means the pigment soaks into the paper really quickly and you end up with a spot. Now, the other thing you can do um, the other thing you can do is if it's just really even too much after you move it around with your brush is get a paper towel and just kind of dab it off. Because I'm going to put um, other colors of paint and they're all going to mix around together, dabbing that off and the marks that it make really doesn't hurt anything. Now, when you dab it off with a paper towel, it is going to dry your paper out a little bit, so you might have to come back and just swirl around some more water. You can see on mine right here, do you see that blue swoosh? And I said some dark blues are really staining. That's what staining means. The pigment soaked into the paper so quick right there from that initial first dark splop that I put on there. Um, sometimes you can get that out by just swishing your brush back and forth across it. Sometimes you cannot. So sometimes the best option is to just come back with a different color. I'm going to put some purples up here and just kind of layer it up over the top of it and hope that it camouflages it. It doesn't always. So that's why knowing what your paints do and don't do is a good idea. I haven't used that blue in a while. I completely forgot that it's as dark as it is. So I'm just going to continue doing the same thing with different color blues here and there all over my background. And I'm just, because the paper's wet, I'm just using my brush to swirl them around. If you feel like you need a little more water here and there, if your paper feels like it's starting to dry out, just dip your brush in the water and come back with more paint. And we're just gonna kinda layer up these colors. If you're not using blue, you're just essentially gonna do the same thing with whatever colors you are using, okay? Um, I think rainbow colors would be fun on this or something like maybe even throw a green in with your blues and make it look like the northern lights. And I'm coming in with some purple. And I'm just swiping them all around. Don't, you know, don't swipe back and forth so much that you lose the individual colors that you can't, you know, see that you've got purple and you can't see that you've got a light blue. Um, but just a little bit here and there with your brush. There we go. So I think I'm going to call it good on my background. Now at this point, um, I need to come back with my pen and start doing some outlining before I put some more color on this. So I want that background to be dry so that when I come in with my pen here, I'm not trying to draw through wet paint. So this is a good spot to pause your video and go hit this with a blow dryer if you have one. A heat gun will work as well. Just make sure you're using it on a lower setting that it's not too hot because if you get the heat too hot, it can change the color of your paint sometimes. Um, if you don't have either of those, pause the video here, set this aside for five or 10 minutes and it'll be good and dry by that point and you'll be ready to come back. So I'm gonna go dry this. Okay, back and my background is dry. You'll notice if you compare what this looked like to right before the pause to what it looks like now, it's much lighter. Um, I've talked about this in other videos, watercolor tends to dry lighter than it looks when it's wet. So once you get your paint dry, if you decide you want this background darker, you would just come and do another layer. And I actually think that's what I'm going to do because I have, I have kind of a snowfall vision in my mind for this. So I'm going to come back and put some more water on this background again. Rewetting this, be very careful because you can pick up 
the pigment and move it around just by re-wetting it. So if you're going to re-wet your paper to do another layer, just don't drag your brush around too terribly much. Try and do it in, in one or two strokes over each spot if you can. Otherwise, that watercolor is going to re-wet that's on the paper and it's going to move around with you and that may not necessarily be what you want. In this case, it probably wouldn't be too bad because our background is not, um, you know, it's not a solid color. It's supposed to be all mottled looking anyway. Um, so I'm just going to come in with some more paint here and there. And again, I'm just going straight from my from my paint palette, from my pans, run my brush through the paint a little bit, streak it onto my paper, move it around a little bit with my brush, different colors, purples, and all I'm trying to do is just make this top part a little darker than it was before. Because I want to add some snowflakes to this. So I want my background to be kind of dark, so I get a nice contrast between the dark background and the white snowflakes that I'm going to, or white stars, snowflakes, could be either. We'll see what they end up looking like. <laughs> so I'm just really trying to make this background darker by simply adding more paint. And it's starting to look quite dark, but again, it's going to um, dry lighter. So I'm just going to keep adding little bits of paint here until I think I've got it how I want it. And it's hard to tell, again, because it dries so much differently than how it looks when it's wet. You might need to do this two or three times until you get the background, um, the darkness, or the vibrancy that you want it. So I'm going to pause again here real quick and go dry this, and I'll be right back. Okay, back, and I'll dry. And you can see it did dry lighter again than it looked when it was wet, but it's darker than it was the first time. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. If you wanted to do another layer, you know, you can continue doing layer on layer on layer until it's the way you want it to be. But I think I'm going to leave mine like it is there. And I'm going to start doing some of the ink work. So I'm going to use my black pen and I'm just going to come in and start outlining some of this. So I'm going to turn this just a little bit so that I have a better drawing angle. Um, please do keep in mind that when you are painting or drawing, you don't have to leave your paper one direction the whole time. Turn it and move it as you go so that you have an angle that's comfortable for you to draw or paint at, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is come in and draw in my ground line. Now keep in mind that if we're doing the drawing like this on watercolor paper, watercolor paper comes in two, uh, well, two main tooths. There are more than that, but the two main tooths that you see are cold press and hot press. And essentially what that means is how much um, texture there is, it's called tooth, how much texture there is on the paper. Generally, watercolor paper, if you're just going to go to the store and buy just, you know, any old kind of generic watercolor paper, it's going to be cold pressed paper, which means that it's going to have a bit of texture to it. Now, I like that because that, um, it adds to things like this mottled background because the paint's going to settle in some of the lower spots and not in the higher spots. And, and so it adds, um, it adds a textured look to your painting, so I like it for that reason. Drawing on it, however, can be a little bit of a challenge because of that tooth. You're sometimes not gonna get um, perfectly smooth lines, and that's okay. Particularly where we're doing something like this that has you know, a bit of a more whimsical look to it. If the line isn't perfect, it's okay. So just keep in mind that if you're trying to draw on cold press watercolor paper, um, you're sometimes gonna get some wonky lines. If you would prefer something that is smoother so that you can draw on it 
um, without getting some of the wonkiness in the lines, you want to go for a hot press paper. Hot press is, is generally um, got less texture in it, so it's easier to draw on. Which you choose is completely up to you. Personal preference. But that's why you kind of see me going back and forth over some of these lines a couple of times is because the, the texture in the paper is making my pens skip a little bit. And that's okay. Now, if you had something like a paint pen, an acrylic paint pen, there's no reason you couldn't do that with this. And it will eliminate some of the skipping because the paint from the paint pen is going to settle down into the curve. So sometimes you get a little bit uh, smoother line if you're going to use a paint pen. So I'm just going to go around the bear. I'm going to speed this up because you don't necessarily need me to talk all the way through doing that. I'm going to go all the way around my bear. I'm going to outline all of my patch, outline down here. I'm going to out, just essentially draw over all of these lines, and then we'll come back and do some more embellishing. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Um, if you guys want to pause it while I do that and you do yours, however you want to do it, but I'm going to speed up a little bit while I do that, and then we'll come back and do some more embellishing on this, okay? Okay, back with my bear all outlined. Um, I do want to mention just a couple things real quick because you may have noticed in um, the sped up section, at one point I stopped and put a Kleenex down under my hand. That's a good uh, little hack trick to keep in mind. I am notorious for starting drawing and then coming back to draw over somewhere else and dragging my hand through wet paint or wet ink. I do it all the time. <laughs> you would think after this long I would learn not to do that, but no. So when I start drawing things like that, I will often put a paper towel or a Kleenex down so that that's under my hand while I'm drawing. And then as I move around, I just move that Kleenex. So if the ink underneath me is still a little bit wet, my hand is not going to smear it. It might soak up into the Kleenex a little bit, but it's generally not going to smear. So I do that all the time. It's really good if you're doing pencil drawings as well, because if you're doing a lot of pencil drawing, your hand can smear through that pencil and you get uh, lead on your hand and then you end up with pencil smears all over your paper. So that's a good little trick to keep in mind. Um, once you've got everything that we've drawn so far outlined. Um, you may notice that you've got pencil pieces showing through, particularly if we're using cold press watercolor paper because it's not real even. Um, your pen might have skipped a little bit and you've got pencil spots showing through. So just go back and erase all of those pencil spots that are showing through. Make sure that your pen is good and dry before you do that because sometimes if the pen isn't real dry, the eraser can smear it as well. So sometimes when I'm doing this, I will go um, and hit it with a blow dryer after I do my pen part just to make sure that that's all dry before I start erasing, okay? So we've got the basics done. Um, I need to come back and black in my eyes here a little bit because this is how we're going to give these eyes some life. We're going to give them a couple of layers. So go ahead and fill those little circles in for your eyes so that those are nice and dark. And we're going to let them dry and then we're going to come back um, and put some white in those. I also want to do the same thing with my nose. So go ahead and color that in as well so the nose is nice and dark. And that way those can be drying while we're doing some other things. And then we'll come back and put some white spots on those as just another layer to give them a little bit of life. And it's, it never ceases to amaze me how a couple of white spots on a black background can bring something to life. So there we go. We got those colored in. Now, I do want to add some color to some other spots on my bear. Um, and I deliberately did it in this order because I want you to see how well these pens stand up to water. Um, some of these areas are kind of small. So if you have a smaller brush and you want to use a smaller brush, absolutely go ahead and do that. I think I'm going to try and do it with the one I've got and see how big a mess I can make. <laughs> um, I want to put a little bit of pink in the ears. 
So I've got some pink in my palette. And I'm just gonna grab a little bit right straight out of there. If you don't have any pink, you could use a red. Um, just load some on your brush and then go to um, maybe your palette lid on your paint set or a plate or something like that and um, paint it out a little bit there and add some more water to it if you need to, to tone it down a little bit. So if you don't have a pink, you could do the same thing with red. Just make sure it's nice and watered down. So I'm gonna give my little bear some pink inner ears. And then I wanna make my trees green. So again, I'm just going straight from my paint pans. I did rinse my brush off in between. And I'm going to do some green trees. Go back to your paint pan, back to your water as often as you need to to make that paint flow and be um, as bright or as dark as you want it. Generally coming straight from the pan, it's gonna be fairly intense color. So if you just add more water to it and spread it around with water, you can see, hopefully you can see on camera, this one's a little darker than this one. And it's just because I put more water on this one and spread the paint around, this one had a little more paint on it. And I'm gonna put a little more paint on this one and make it a little darker. Just so that I've got a little bit of contrast in my trees, they're not all exactly the same. Now at this point, if you wanted to, add just a little more whimsy to it. You could come back with maybe, I've got a turquoise blue, and I'm just gonna tap it here and there on my trees. Because those trees are wet still, that color is just gonna kinda disperse out. So hopefully that picked up on camera. put the green on my trees first and then came back with just kind of a turquoisey blue. You could do it with yellow, you could do it with a darker green, you could do it with pretty much whatever color you want. Um, and I just tapped my brush here and there so that it just dropped little blobs of color and because those trees were already wet, they all mingled together. Now, keep in mind when you're doing something like that, that your colors do need to be colors that will mix together nicely. Um, if I did red in there, you would still see little spots of red here and there, but where the paint dispersed out into the green, it would turn brown. So you do have to keep a little bit of color mixing theory in mind so that you don't end up with lots of browns and grays, unless that's the look you're going for. If you're not sure if your colors are gonna play nice together, I always keep a scrap of paper so that I can test my colors. So if you're not sure what they're gonna do, try it on a scrap of paper first. So I'm gonna put some green on this. And then if I wanted to use something that was more red to see what it's gonna do, I can do that. Now in this case, those two colors went together pretty well. Um, that red was vibrant enough that it's kind of holding its own. So even though the general color theory is red and green are gonna make brown, depending on how your paints work together, it might be all right. Um, this one is kind of more of a hot pink and you can see it's kind of turning brown there. And even this one where it's starting to disperse out is turning brown around the edges. So it does, you know, but it still held it on its own okay. So I always like to have a scrap piece of paper. That way I can test things like that before I do them on my actual painting. Um, I am going to continue adding some color to this. I think I'm gonna do yellow in my star. So at this point, you're just going to continue coloring things in, adding more embellishments until you feel like it's done. And there really is no right or wrong to this. You get to decide when it's done based on when your eye says it's done. And those of you 
who've been with me for a while know less is more, or sorry, more is more for me. I like lots of doodles. I like mine to be kind of busy, so I'm going to keep going on mine. Um, but you could stop at whatever point you want to stop. Um, let me add a little bit of pink to these hearts. Now I am also going to add some more doodle embellishments to the bear itself here in just a minute. I'm going to get my little pink hearts done here. Um, I mentioned a minute ago that if you had a smaller brush and you wanted to use a smaller brush for this part, you certainly could. Um, if you've got watercolor brushes that have nice, really pointy tips on them, you don't always have to go to a smaller brush. Um, this brush is technically too big for the space I'm doing it in, but because it comes down to a nice, really pointy tip, I can use just that tip and very light pressure so that I'm not, you know, mashing the whole brush onto it and be able to do those small spots um, with a fairly good sized brush. So if you've got a, a watercolor brush that's, that's really nice that way and, and has a nice pointy tip, you can do that. Okay, so. I've got that done on my bear, but I'm going to add some more to it. Um, I mentioned at the beginning we were going to put some stitches around the patch so that it looks like it's sewn on. And the way I'm going to do that is by just making little stitch marks. And I'm just going to do them randomly, sometimes one, sometimes two, all the way around my patch. I'm not going to do it over here because that's where it's kind of going around the back. Um, you know, if you think about this patch going over the back, that's not necessarily a stitch spot. That's just continuing over. The stitches are going to be around the edges. So just like that, I am going to come in and black in this little U shape right here because if this patch were going around the back, there's going to be a shadow right here. So if you black that little spot in, it starts to look like a shadow and adds to um, the three-dimensional illusion. Okay. Um, I am going to add, what else am I going to add to this little guy? I'm going to add just some random curly cues here and there. And my thought on that is that those kind of bring to mind the idea of fur to me. Maybe he's got some little curly cowlicks in, in its fur. So I'm just going to do some of those here and there, vary the number of them. I'm going to add some little furry tips to its ears. So I'm just going to kind of do a little bit of this cross hatching across the top of its ears here and there. Okay, now I did grab a white paint pen and I forgot about this at the very beginning, but this is what we're going to use to make some stars or snowflakes in the background. And this is also what we're going to use to add some white to the eyes. So whatever you have for a white pen, I really love the Posca paint pens because it's a nice opaque white. Um, if you have a Uniball white gel pen, that will work. Sometimes a white colored pencil will work. Um, whatever the white pen of your choice is. I just happen to like this paint pen because it's a nice opaque white. It's not, things don't show through it. So I'm gonna come in on these eyes and just put a little white dot. I'm gonna show you this too. I think I've showed you this in other videos, but just in case with these paint pens, when the tips start running out of paint, you have to push down on them to re-ink the paint. And I always recommend that scrap piece of paper for a variety of reasons. If you have to re-ink the tip of this, do that pushing down on it on a scrap piece of paper, not on your painting, because often um, you'll get a little bubble of paint come out and you don't want that little bubble on your painting. So if it's on your scrap piece of paper, then it doesn't hurt anything. So I'm just gonna come in and put a little dot in each eye and I'm gonna put like a little comma on its nose with that white paint pen. <sighs> That's going to give some life 
to the eyes of my bear. If you then want to come back and add some more decoration to your trees, maybe you want to put stars on top of your trees, you can do that. And I'm not going to paint these in, I'm just going to have them be little black drawn in stars. If you wanted to paint them in, certainly you could do that. And I think I'm going to add some garland to my tree. So kind of like I did on the patch up here, I want my garland to look like it's going around the tree. So to do that, I'm going to start on one side and I'm going to come out and around and then kind of make an S shape. So it looks like it's coming from the back around front and then going back around to the back. Now, because this is where it's going around to the back, I'm not going to see it on the front, but I'm going to follow that line with my pen and do it again. So you can see it kind of adds the illusion of garland going around. On this one, I'm just going to put some lines. And this is just to decorate my trees a little bit. You certainly don't have to do this. And on this one over here, I'm going to put some circles. And maybe a few little tinsely things off the bottom on each of them. So like I mentioned a minute ago, this is the point where you get to decide how much you want on yours. I like to have all these little doodly touches because I think it just adds more interest, more things for your eye to look at. Um, I do want to put some starry looking things in the background. So I'm going to take my white pen and I'm just going to kind of dab it here and there to add little white spots. You can make some bigger than others. And just randomly add them. I'm gonna do a couple of these a little bit bigger. Now on other paintings, when we've added, um, you know, kind of these little stippled dots in the past, we've done it with paint in the brush and flicked the paint on. Um, that doesn't always work with white watercolor. Some sets don't even have a white in them, but because watercolor by its nature is semi-transparent, um, if we were to flick the white paint on here, they're not going to show up very vividly. They might when they're wet, but once they dry, you're going to see the paint that's behind them coming through. So we would get a lot of blue um, showing up through that, and I don't want that. I want these white dots to stand out. So I'm just making a few here and there. some of them bigger than others. You decide how many you're gonna add. And then on just a couple, I'm gonna make a straight line down through. Let me zoom in so you can see. I'm gonna make a straight line down through and then another cross line. And I'm not gonna do it on all of them, I'm just gonna do it on a couple of the bigger ones. My pen is out of ink out of paint. I think my pen is actually almost out of paint completely. Woo! Too big. You get the idea on those. So we end up with some that kind of look like stars that way. And you can do it on as many or as few as you choose to. Generally that particular embellishment um, is better if it's only done on just a few here and there. Don't do it wholesale across the board. Um, the pen doesn't want to do what I want it to do. Just do them on a few here and there. And if you want more white dots, just keep stippling with your pen. And all I'm doing is just tapping the pen against the paper.
as many as you would like. Okay, so I think there's a little too much white going on here. So I'm going to go in and add a little bit of blue to the patch just so there's a little bit of color there and that way maybe that patch stands out just a little bit more. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of blue and I'm probably going to add more water to this and kind of pull that blue around so that it lightens up because that's a pretty intense blue. But that's gonna set that patch apart from the white of the polar bear. So we're just breaking up that white a little bit so that it looks like the patch is sitting on top like a patch would. This is another spot if you had a smaller brush and wanted to use a smaller brush you could. I'm going to use this same one so I've got that nice sharp point but even with that nice sharp point you do have to be a little bit careful it does take um, maybe a little more time than if you had a smaller brush just because you're trying to be really careful and not put too much pressure on it so that you are taking advantage of using that nice sharp tip. So I have not gotten more paint on my brush. I'm just dragging around that original little bit of paint that I got. And the more I drag it around, the lighter it gets because I'm spreading that paint over a larger area. And if you need more water to do that, you could certainly dip your brush in water and get a little bit more water. Okie dokie. So I got my patch. I'm going to add just a few more embellishments to this, I think. Um, I'm going to put another little heart right here where its heart would be. And I'm going to add some little marks that look like snowflakes to me. I'm not going to make them as complicated as this one was. We're just going to do them like that. So to do that, I'm going to do a cross shape and then diagonal lines. And I'm just going to do those here and there all over my polar bear. Just so that it adds a little bit more to it. Again, how many and how big? You know, I'm smaller. Um, it's a good idea to vary the sizes on them just because that gives a little bit of visual interest. I'm going to put one on his little paw down here. So at this point, you would just keep going with this until you feel like it's done. I think for the sake of video length, I'm going to probably stop mine right here. Um, you could, if you wanted to, um, put some trees or some rocks or other things in the ground down there. I'm going to leave mine just as it is. I'm going to pull my tape off real quick so you can see what the tape does. I mashed it all together. Now I can't get it off. So down here in the white, you don't notice anything, but as we get up to the blue, you pull that tape off, it gives you a nice clean border around your painting. So it almost looks like it's got a little bit of a frame on it. Now I wasn't very careful with my taping. And you can see I've got a little bit of paint up here where it got between the tape. Oftentimes you can fix that if you go in with a white paint pen. Might take you a couple of layers because sometimes that paint will lift back up through if it's a dark color in particular like this purple. Um, just go over it with a white paint pen. Let it dry. You might have to do it one or two times. But generally you can fix those areas like that if, if the paint got under your tape a little bit or like it, me if you didn't tape it very carefully and you had an open spot there. Um, that white paint pen can cover that up. But I, I like the tape because it gives you that nice border around it so it looks a little more finished when you're done. 
don't forget to sign your painting. It's always a good idea to sign them and date them so that you can look back and see how your skills have grown over time. And there we go. We've got us a nice little winter polar bear. Um, like I said, this is a fun one to do with kids because they it's not hard to draw and they can just run wild with this. And if you don't have any kids around for the holiday, do it yourself anyway because it's fun to let our inner kids play. There is absolutely no rule that says art has to be serious. The whole idea is that it should be fun. So there we go, my friends. With that, I'm going to bid you a happy holidays. Enjoy painting. Um, if you do make it and you'd like to share, I would love to see it. You're welcome to, to tag me on social media. I'm at Painted Willow Art on both Facebook and Instagram, although I do spend more time on Instagram. Um, I'm also at Painted Willow Art on Pinterest. I post lots of, or save lots of ideas if you're looking for ideas for things to draw and paint. Um, certainly you can go to my Pinterest and there's all kinds of ideas. And if you don't want to show anybody, you know what? You don't have to. <laughs> Making art should be for you because you enjoy it. So don't ever feel pressured to show anybody anything you create. But I am most happy to cheer you on if you do feel like sharing. So with that, happy holidays, everybody. And I will be back in January with another video for you. Bye.